for a few moments, I want to talk a bit about uh, uh, the importance of understanding uh, the birth of Jesus, what Jesus shows us about God. That's what I want to think about. Now, um, uh, I thought, to, to begin with, really, um, um, many of you know, and you might have worked out by now, uh, if you hear my accent, I'm from Essex, and um, I'm very proud. I'm very proud to say that I'm from Essex, and uh, there is a bit of an Essex influx uh, this morning, which is all good. And I did think it's about time, um, you know, you sometimes hear my Essex-isms, and uh, it's about time that I taught you some Essex speak, and I thought this is probably the best day to do it. Um, this will set you up for next year, so you'll be able to understand what I'm saying when I'm preaching that sort of stuff. So what I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a guide to understanding Essex speak this morning. Okay? I'm going to give you my top ten, and um, we'll see if you can work them out. And you will be, well, you'll be bilingual by the end of this, I have to say, Okay. And do you do? So let me give you the first one. Here is the first, uh, the first one. Okay, that's the first. Okay, now in case you're not sure what that is, um, I'm going to give you a definition. All right, okay. Got it? All right, I'll give you the actual, re- here is what it is. How much is it? How much is it, you see? Got it? Okay, number two. Here's the next one. Little clue. What is it? Horse, lovely. Get it right, not horse. Horse. Okay, number three. This is a good one. Say what you see. Give me the definition. Some of you getting it now. It's a quarter panda, isn't it? A quarter panda. That's how you've got to say it. Not a panda. So here we go. Let's just make sure. There we go. It's a panda. Okay. Uh, number four. Yeah, you see. You're going to tune in now, aren't you? Okay, just to help you out. Definition. Okay. So we've got to go downhill. Where are we going? Here's the route. There we go. Downhill. See, it's all good, isn't it? You see. That means, oh, let's, uh, let's, let's, here's another one. Uh, Sarah knows this one well. Six girls love these, okay. Uh, just in case you're wondering, here's the definition. Okay, some of you are tuning in now, so what is it? High heels. High heels. Ooh, okay. Wait, don't drop the H. It's very important. Drop the H, everybody, okay. Um, here's a tricky one. Okay, number six. <laughs> okay, definition. Okay. Do you know what I mean? There we go. It means? There you go. See, it's all good. Uh, uh, it, I, I'm up it up a little bit more now. Number seven. So you're, all, you're saying what you see now. I can hear this. Oh, lovely. I'm hearing Essex coming back at me. It's fantastic. Okay. Here's the definition in case you're wondering. Okay. Oh, no, got it. So it's, what do you call it? What do you call it? So you've got to get the wadja, um, and the, uh, the answer is, there you go. And um, number eight. <laughs> These are good, aren't they? See, I told you, this is like educational. Uh, the definition, in case you're wondering. Okay. So it is? What do you reckon? Okay. And um, oh, now, uh, I have to say, I use this one quite a bit. Um, number nine. Okay, the definition. Not, who's, are you all saying whereabouts? I mean, come on, it's whereabouts. <laughs> whereabouts, you see? Okay. And one final one, and uh, I do this a lot. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, the answer is, yeah, there we go. Expresso goes through. It is Frank. You could have also had Fink and Furrock as well if you wanted to. Um, but so there you go, you see? There's my definition of ethics speak. So now you know. Now you know. Now you are educated. You now know when I'm speaking, when I'm talking, you can understand me clearly. Now, it's very interesting. And you're thinking, why on earth have you done that? Well, it's very interesting that some of you had no idea, first of all. You thought, I, what, is, what is he doing? And others of you begin to tune in, begin to see it, begin to understand it, begin to really understand the things that uh, we were put, I was putting up on the screen. And the reason I've done that is actually sometimes that's how we view Christmas. That's how we view the birth of Jesus. We think we see it, 
but we don't see it. Or we think we understand it, but we don't understand it. Or we don't look closely enough to really see what Christmas is all about. A bit like those epic words. Uh, some of you saw it, some of you didn't. Some of you eventually saw it. Some of you perhaps never saw it. Don't want to see it, maybe. I don't know. But that's also a bit about the birth of Jesus, isn't it? Some of us see it. Some of us half see it. Some of us don't want to see it because it challenges us as to why we celebrate Christmas, why it's so important. You see, it's amazing to me that an event that happened over 2,000 years ago, the birth of Jesus, has such a profound impact on us today, here on the other side of the world. And it has to raise that question, which we have to ask, which we've been asking all through this series that we've been going through over the last couple of weeks, is why did Jesus come to earth? Why is Christmas such a big deal? And I don't just mean all the commercial stuff and all the sort of present buying and all the different elements. Why is Christmas so important? Why is it that we keep coming back to it year after year after year after year? And if you think about it over the last couple of weeks, if you've been with us or even if you haven't, we've been trying to get behind what was actually happening at the Nativity with this series called Do You See What I See? based on that Christmas carol. We've been trying to get behind the scene, get behind what was actually happening and try and understand why did Jesus come into this world? Why did he come to this earth? And it's really important that we know the answer to that question. Not only does it affect our eternal destiny, not only does it affect our life today, but actually it affects how we view Christmas. In fact, we will be more excited about Christmas the more we understand why Jesus came into this world. So I want to give you three other reasons. I've given you lots over this last couple of weeks. I want to give you just three simple reasons this morning for you to take away to hopefully think about as you enjoy your Christmas day. Three reasons why Jesus came to the earth. The first one is this. Jesus came to earth to show us what God is like. Now there's a lot of crazy, bizarre ideas of what people think about God. People have different views about God. Lots of people say, well, I think God is like this and I think God is like that. And people have a view of God and they say, well, if God is like that, if God allows, say, suffering, or if God allows that to happen in that area, or to allow war and poverty, if that is like God, then I don't want to know him. And people have these crazy ideas about God. You just go on the internet and you can find plenty of them, trust me. And a lot of people say, I don't believe in a God like that. And I would say to them, I agree with you. I don't believe in a God like that, these bizarre ideas. I believe in a God that actually came to rescue us. Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. He also said in John 14, 6 to 9, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. In other words, Jesus comes to us and he says, I have come to show you what God is like. For example, by looking at nature, we can know that God is creative and powerful. We can look at the waves and the wind and the rotation of the earth and all the power of God that is seen in the universe. But there are some things, the most important things, you would never know about God except what Jesus came to tell us. Nature doesn't teach us that God is loving. We only know that because of Jesus Christ. Nature doesn't teach us that God is forgiving. We only know that because of Jesus. Nature doesn't teach us that God has a plan for our life. We only know that because of Jesus. We only know because of the fact that Jesus came into this world. Only Jesus can teach us that stuff. He is the one who lets us know what God is really like. Colossians 1 verses 15 to 16 tells us, that Jesus Christ is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He existed before God made anything at all. In fact, Christ himself is the creator who made everything. Jesus didn't start life in the stable. His beginning was not in that little manger scene. He existed before creation. In fact, the Bible says he is the creator because he is God. Jesus made you. We have a phrase, don't we? Like father, like son. Well, that is true with God. If you have seen the son, you have seen the father. You have seen God. So that's the first reason that Jesus came to earth, so that we can know what God is like. Secondly, Jesus came to earth to offer us forgiveness. The third reason Jesus came, the, the, the second reason is, is that Jesus came to forgive us of everything that we have done wrong. We have done things wrong. And if we want to go to heaven when we die, we need forgiveness. We need forgiveness from God. 
1 John 3 verse 5 says this, he became a man so that he could take away our sins. And in Philippians 2 verses 6 and 8, it says, though he was God, did not demand and cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power and glory, taking the disguise of a slave and becoming like men. And he humbled himself even further, going so far as actually to die a criminal death on a cross. Jesus came to earth to die for all the things that we've done wrong. And we have done wrong. We have rebelled against God. We have decided that we want to do our own thing. We have decided that we want to live our own life. And therefore, we need rescuing. We need a saviour. We need someone who is going to take the punishment that we deserve. And the Bible says that, Je that God sends Jesus into this world so that we might be forgiven. We have to, either we are going to take that punishment or someone else is. And God's grace sends Jesus into this world to take the punishment that we deserve. And therefore, this gift of forgiveness, which every single person needs, whether we believe it or not, this gift of forgiveness that God gives to us is available to us and what better time to open that gift than Christmas itself. But here's the thing. The gift of forgiveness, it's freely available, but it wasn't cheap. It actually cost Jesus a lot. God sacrificed a lot for this for you. In other words, God left his eternal throne, he left the glories of heaven, and he came and he limited himself, and he became a human being. And he put up with all the aches and pains and everything that we suffer, and all the different things that we go through, he put up with all of that, he humiliated himself, the Bible says, and he became like one of us. It's as if the king himself takes off his royal robes, takes off his crown, and comes down to live with us, and puts on the clothes of a slave so that he might come and serve us, that he might come and live with us, that he might come and rescue us. And he loves us so much that he comes and he dies in our place. And that's the third thing, the third reason why Jesus came to earth, because he loves you. Jesus came to this world because he loves you. He loves you much more than you will ever understand. No one will ever love you as much as God does. You may have a great relationship with someone. You may be deeply loved by someone. But God's love for you is far greater than that because it is unconditional. It is a love that will never let you down. It is a love that will never let you go. And if you ever doubt how much God loves you, if you've been battered and bruised this last year, if you've been affected by, I don't know, relationships that have gone wrong or people that have let you down or you've just felt that you can't be loved, there's something wrong with you because people have damaged you in some way. God says to you, I love you so much. My love for you is unconditional. My love for you is infinite. And if you ever doubt how much God loves you, then you look at a cross and you see a saviour hanging on a cross with arms stretched out wide saying, this is how much I love you. I will die on the cross to save you, to rescue you. You matter this much to you that if you were the only person alive, I would still come and die for you. You are that important. You are that special. 1 John 4, 9 to 10 says this, God showed how much he loves us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, that God sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sin. The Bible says the greatest kind of love a person can have is when you give your life for somebody else. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And the incredible truth is, is that Jesus lays down his life for you, even when you are an enemy. Because if you're not for God, you are against God. You cannot ever sit on the fence. You're either with or you're against. And yet, even when we are in rebellion, even when the Bible says we were enemies of God, Christ died for sinners. He died for you and for me. He gave his life for us. And therefore, Christmas is for your benefit. Yes, Christmas is all about Jesus Christ, but God knew that you needed a rescuer, you needed a saviour. If you didn't need what Jesus had to offer, he wouldn't have wasted the effort, he wouldn't have come, he wouldn't have come to earth to die for you. And therefore, God's Christmas gift for you is so that you can know God personally, not just know about God, but know him personally. 
you can have a personal relationship with the creator of the universe. And the fact is, is that you are created for a relationship with God. If you miss that, you have missed the whole reason why you are alive. God made you so that you could know him and be in relationship with him. That's the gift of Christmas. But you know, it's no good someone giving you a gift and then just leaving it under the Christmas tree and never ever opening it. You actually have to open that gift. Otherwise, you don't benefit from it. You don't enjoy it. And it's the same with the gift that God offers to us at Christmas. So many of us hear about the gift of a saviour, hear about the one who came into this world, and we go, oh, that's lovely, and we leave it under the tree until next year, when we might have another little look at it. And then we think, oh, that's great, but I won't open it, because I know that's going to mean I'm going to have to change, and I mean that's going to have to challenge me over some areas of my life. I'll just leave it under the tree till next year, and then next year... And then next year, it's almost like we're getting a a Christmas Groundhog Day. And yet when you open up this gift of Christmas, the gift of a saviour, it makes all the difference. Look at Romans 5, verses 10 and 11. It says this, We were restored to friendship with God by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies. And we will be delivered from eternal punishment by his life. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us. This is the most wonderful gift you will ever be given. However great the gifts you get today, they are nothing in comparison to this gift. Let me just say, if you aren't a Christian, if you don't have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, please, please don't allow another Christmas to go by without unwrapping and accepting God's Christmas gift to you. You might say, do you know what, Phil? I've, I've heard you say this many times before. I come fairly regularly to church and I check it out and I just, you know, there's things that I think, yeah, yeah, I can go with that, but there's other areas I'm not sure about. But you might be saying, but, but how do I take that next step? If I really want to accept that gift, what, what do I do? Here's what you do. Romans 10, 9 tells us. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus didn't just come to earth to demonstrate God's love. He came to achieve an urgent rescue. In his justice, God must punish sin, but in his great love, he longs to forgive us. That's why he sent Jesus to this earth, to rescue us so that we could be his friends. Jesus, you see, lived a perfect life. He was the one man who ever lived who did not deserve to die, who did not deserve to face the punishment of sinful humanity when he died on the cross. Yet Jesus willingly took that punishment that we deserve. So we don't need to face it. Therefore, if we trust in him, we can be sure that the price has been paid for our sins. And we are completely accepted by God. Not because of anything that we have done, but because of Jesus and what he did as he rescued us, as he died in our place. That's why Christmas is essential. The coming of Jesus is not only relevant to religious people, if you like, or or, or, or those with a Christian background, or those who come and worship at church. Jesus is applicable to everyone. He is relevant to every person who has ever lived and who will ever live. Because every single person needs to be rescued. We need to be forgiven. We need to be accepted. I hope that you'll take that step. I hope that you will come and discover more about the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a couple of ways that you can do that. We, we could give you a little booklet. It's called The Real Christmas. Um, you can pick one of those up at the information desk on the way out. You can come and join something called Christianity Explored, which helps you find out more about what uh, Christianity is all about. Or you can come and join us Sunday mornings, each Sunday, as we look at what the Bible says. Particularly, I start a new series on January the 7th called Fresh Start. How do you have a fresh start in your life, in different areas of your life? We would love you to join us. We would love to help you discover more about this Saviour, Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that Christmas speaks about a Saviour, It speaks about one who came to rescue us because the reality is we all need to be rescued. 
Father, however we stand before you this morning, whatever level we're thinking through, help us not leave this. Help us to really think through what it means, what Christmas truly is all about. That we really see. That we get past the scenes of the so-called Christmas card nativity scenes and we look past that and we think and realise it's about the birth of a saviour. Help us to understand these things we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.